Hi, Otto here for Bavarian Autosport. In this series of videos, we're going to be showing you shock, strut, and spring replacement on various BMW and Mini models. What you see before me here is a small assortment of the product that we carry for these applications. We have the various Bilstein products, Kony products, as well as installation hardware to include spring seats, upper mounts, strut mounts, dust tubes, and compression absorbers, and the key player in this party, which is the spring compressor. We'll need this spring compressor for all of our front applications and some of the rear applications. We need to compress the spring to be able to take the upper mounts off. Everything you see here and in the video is available in our online store at bavauto.com. Now let's go ahead and get to today's video. In this video, we'll be installing shocks on an E90 3 Series chassis. We'll be specifically installing the Kony Sport adjustable shocks. What you see here will be applicable to all shock, strut, and spring applications for this E90 chassis. All right, now here we are at the left front of this uh, 335 E90 chassis. We'll be replacing the shock absorber. To do so, we'll be disconnecting the sway bar link, which is here. That'll be this nut. We will be loosening the forward control arm bolt so that the control arm can move downward a bit more. Additionally, the lower control arm over here, which goes into the frame, the headlight adjuster, and finally, the clamp, which secures the shock absorber into the knuckle assembly. So let's get to work with that. I'm going to put on a pair of the safe grip gloves, and we'll start with the sway bar link here. Now I'm going to remove this 16 millimeter nut, the through stud, on the ball joint of the sway bar link has a 17 millimeter flat on it so that we so that it doesn't turn when we try to loosen the nut. We'll get our 17 millimeter wrench on that, get our socket here, and that's off. That will come out when we lower the strut a little bit more. Okay now you can see this sway bar link is pulling downward with the strut or the uh, stud angled upward. That's because the other side has already been installed and the suspension is pulling down just a little bit more than this side is. I'm going to take a pry bar between the control arm and the sway bar over here and pry the sway bar up like this so that we can push that stud through. There we go. And there, there it is and here's the flats we had the wrench on. So we'll just leave that set aside in the back, pull this bracket off, which was securing the hose, set that aside, gently let the sway bar back up. Now, in order to access the bolt for this control arm bushing, and remember, we just have to loosen it so the control arm will hang down a little bit more, we have to remove the inner shield here. We have a 10 millimeter plastic nut here, an eight millimeter bolt here, and we have around the perimeter uh, about maybe 10 securing 10, uh, eight millimeter bolts. There's a few on the bottom as well. We'll take the shield off and then we'll come back and show you the loosening of the bolt for the bushing. Okay, now we have the inner fender removed. If you'd like to see details on that, you can watch our LED angel eye installation video, which also requires removal of this shield. And uh, it actually was this same car. The uh, LED headlight is right up here. And we're going to now loosen the bolt on this forward bushing. Again, we're not going to remove it. We're just going to loosen it so that the control arm will actually hang down a little bit more and allow us to lower the hub to remove the shock. So that's good right there. That's all we need. We'll now go to the inner bushing down over here, and again, just loosen that one. We're going to loosen the bolt on this bushing in the same way we did the front. This one, however, does have a nut. The nut's back here, the bolt is here. This forward one has a captive nut, so all we had was the bolt to deal with. So here, I'm just gonna pull this plastic shield back enough to get my wrench on the nut, and I'm going to use a ratcheting wrench here, and 
get my other wrench on the forward bolt head. Now I'm working from below so I'm not in the way of the camera, but this can be done from above. You could also, if you wish, remove this lower plastic panel and you'll have much uh, clearer access to the bolt, but it's certainly not required. There we go. Again, we're just loosening. That's plenty. And we'll go on to the next step of releasing the clamp here. Okay, now we are going to pull the bolt on the clamp, which holds the shock into the spindle clamp. This is 18 millimeter on both sides. And we'll get a wrench on the inside here. There we go. We'll fully remove the bolt. And there's the bolt and the nut. Now we have the bracket here, which holds the ABS sensor wire and the brakeware sensor wire both here. Okay, now before we work on fully removing the strut, let's go ahead and disconnect the uh, ABS sensor wire and the brake pad wear sensor wire. We have them connected into brackets here, which you may not be able to see on the camera. They might be behind the strut, but they're rubber grommets in the bracket. We'll just pull them out. And then the actual connections are in this box here. We'll pop this box open, disconnect the wires in here, and that way, there we go, in here, and that way we'll be able to let this uh, spindle assembly hang without stretching these wires. So we have this one popped. We'll disconnect these and pop this one out of the uh, bracket as well, and then we'll move on from there. Okay, here we go. Here's these two wires. Here's the rubber grommet area, which was in the bracket back here. The easiest way to remove these is to twist them as you remove them from the bracket and kind of walk them out of the bracket. Here's the two connectors, and we have the two vehicle connectors here. So we'll just let those hang free and just out of the way. Now before we fully lower the strut assembly, we're on this uh, left side we're going to disconnect the headlight aiming link here. Now this bracket is loose because we undid the, we loosened the uh, bolt on the control arm bushing, so that's why that's loose. We're going to disconnect the link on its snap bracket right here. Alternately, you could unscrew the link up here. You've got a nut on the back side and some flats on the ball joint here. You could just disconnect it at the arm, but it's very easy to undo this clip. Going to use a pair of either needle nose or diagonal cutter pliers just to squeeze the other side of this clip to release it. There we go, and that's what the clip looks like. This comes together like this and snaps together. We'll just let that hang out of the way. Now finally, we're going to actually remove the caliper so that as the strut assembly hangs down, we don't stretch the hose. We'll reframe and just show you that. Now to remove the caliper, we're just going to take the caliper off of the bracket. First, we'll get rid of the anti-rattle clip. There, there's a little divot here. Simply pry and pull the clip out. And we have the two guide bolts, just as with most BMW calipers. One here, remove the plastic cap. One right here. Again, use a small screwdriver to remove the plastic cap. We'll set those aside. And we have our common seven millimeter Allen head guide bolts inside the bushings here. We'll just remove the guide bolts and then we'll lift the caliper off. Now we'll support the caliper with a piece of wire, a bungee, a string, a big zip tie, whatever you'd like. Just hang the caliper from something. We're going to use some holes that are uh, up in the frame and just hang it out of the way. And again, the only reason to do that is so that when the suspension is dangling, the brake hose is not 
tight and stressed. Now we have the guide bolts. They're not fully removed, they're right here. Just have them pulled out far enough that they're not in the bracket. And we pry the caliper this way so that it'll clear the bracket, push the piston in, and then it just lifts off. There we go now. We'll use a piece of wire and hang the caliper just out of the way over in the inner fender well. Here we are up top under the hood. This is our strut tower on the driver's side, the side we're working on. We're going to be re releasing the strut from the tower with one, two, and three nuts. The third one is under this factory stress bar. We'll have to use a wrench there, but we can use a socket on these two. So let's get to that. These are 13 millimeter. And uh, just to show you with the wrench, we'll just come in from underneath like that and loosen the nut. We'll come back when we have these loosened. Okay, now I'm on the last nut here. I have either a jack underneath the strut to support it as I remove the last nut, or in this case, we have a helper pushing up and holding up on the strut. So go ahead and uh, apply some upward pressure there. And we'll get this last nut off. And then gently just lower the strut assembly down inside the housing. Make sure that it doesn't fall outside into the fender. And we're good on that for the moment. Now we'll reframe and go underneath and start removing the uh, strut assembly from the knuckle. Now our final before actually pulling the strut out of the clamp here is to spread this split just a little bit to release the strut. Now we've turned the wheel a little to the left to give better access. Now the strut itself at the top is resting inside the fender well with a rag protecting the inside fender well so that we don't get into the fender. We'll use a wedge, in this case, a large screwdriver to fit down in the split here. A uh, large cold chisel works very well too and isn't as long, it may be easier to work with. But we have this here, we'll just tap it in in order to spread the split. And at this point, I believe we're probably loose enough to pull that out. Let's see. Yep, see there we're loose. Now we will turn the wheel the other direction so the strut actually lowers. As we turn the suspension, the strut comes up and down depending on the angle of the arms. We'll turn to the right so that everything is a little bit lower and we can tip the strut out of the fender well and then pull it out of the clamp. Now we've turned the wheel to the right, which will lower the bottom of the strut. Notice the tape here protecting the fender. We'll pull out and work the strut out of the clamp. And gently at the end, and there we go. Notice the alignment tabs here, which go into the split and we lower it right up till it hits this tab. We want to lower it all the way in, see how much is below the uh, clamp in the installed position. So we'll pull this out, we'll clean up the area down here, and then we'll prepare for the new strut going in. Now, we do have to disassemble this strut. We're still using this spring. We're using this upper mount and the spring plate. We'll use a spring compressor to disassemble this and then reassemble it on the new strut assembly. Okay, now, here we have our new Coney shock assembled with the spring and upper mount assembly. We're going to slide that into our clamp. Note the stop and the guide pin. And it just drops right in. We did have to open the clamp just a little bit. The shock was just a little bit wider than the original, so we moved our, uh, basically our spreader tool a little further in, tapped it with the hammer a little bit so the shock would slide in easily. There it's located, it's all the way down. 
and from there we'll work on our reassembly. We'll remove our spreader. That will allow the clamp to pinch the shock. We'll push everything back up in uh, and get our nuts started up on the top in the strut tower. Then we'll work on getting all of our bracketry and uh, caliper back together. One note as we're going back together, on these control arm bushings, these bushings are rubber and fluid filled bushings. We do need to tighten the bolts on both of these with the suspension at ride height. So before we're fully finished, we need to either drive the car up on ramps so we can get underneath it and tighten those bolts when the wheels are on, or put a jack under the control arms here and gently jack this side up while the vehicle's in the air, being careful not to lift the vehicle off of whatever our supporting structure is before we tighten that bolt and the bolt on this bushing here. Once those are finally tightened and everything else is connected, this is all done here.